Yo. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. We got when Michael Jordan was not clutch. We're gonna check this video out. We're gonna check out this video and um see what's up with uh Michael Jordan not being clutch. We all know about Michael Jordan's greatest playoff performances, yep. the iconic moments and images where he stood out and excelled at the game's highest level when the games mattered the most. Yep. This is how he established his dominance. As arguably the most clutch player to ever live, there were fight Michael Jordan.com slash Johnny Arnett to get your gifts and help support the channel. Despite Michael Jordan okay, being seen as arguably the most clutch player to ever live, there were several times where he was anything but. Some of these instances. So let me make sure my microphone is actually connected. But sometimes, okay, it, it's on uh, blue snowball. Okay, just had to make sure my, my microphone is like actually working. Sometimes OPS be tripping. Sometimes. Any Jordan stands would prefer to pretend it never existed. But alas, we're diving into them for a more honest and genuine understanding of basketball history. Number five. Game six of the 1992 Eastern Conference semifinals against the New York against Knicks. The Knicks. With an opportunity to close the out the series, Jordan produced one of the worst postseason performances of his career. In a hostile Madison Square Garden, New York completely controlled the game from a physicality standpoint and had Jordan somewhat homesick. The Bulls were Damn. actually up by two points heading into the fourth quarter, but Jordan went ice cold in the fourth, no. resulting in the Knicks winning the game by 14 points. On the night, Jordan struggled his way to a total of just 21 points, 8 rebounds, and... He said just 21 points. You know, I guess because for his uh playoff career, I think he was averaging like way more than that. I want to say like closer to 30, uh, if not more than 30. But I guess the 7 turnovers would, is what really catches me. The 7 turnovers and the 36% from the field, that's crazy for Michael Jordan seven turnovers on nine of 25 <clears throat> shooting in the field. He was also one of five from three point range and only two of four from the free throw line. Well, shot four free throws. Four, game four of the 1996 NBA Finals against the Seattle Supersonics. This wasn't just one of the worst playoff games of Jordan's career, but it was one of the most inefficient series of his career as the Seattle defense did a fantastic job of making Jordan uncomfortable and forcing him to take extremely difficult shots. In this game, in particularly, Adam. it was Gary Payton's Hall of Fame defense that caused Jordan problems. The Bulls had the opportunity to sweep the series, but were instead blown out in Seattle Stadium Damn. as Jordan put out a disappointing stat line of 23 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 4 turnovers on 6 of 19 shooting from the field. Ultimately, Jordan would go on to secure his fourth championship ring, of course. but a sweep of the 64 and 18 Supersonics would have made it really difficult to argue against the 96 Bulls. Whoa, the Supersonic was 64 and 8 that year? Damn, this. That's great. Being the greatest team of all time. Number three, game two of the 1989 Eastern Conference semifinals against the New York Knicks. Usually, Jordan. Hold on, I think he says 74 and 8. I'm not sure. I'm not going back. He was the one dominating New York, but not on this night, as MJ had the lowest scoring playoff game of his entire career. Jordan wasn't just inefficient from the field, but from the free throw line as well, as he finished with only 15 points, oh, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. That is kind of low to for sum up Michael Jordan. How disappointing of an evening this was for MJ, consider how John Paxson was the team's leading scorer, who took less than half as many shots as Jordan did. Hey. For their home crowd, New York crushed Chicago with a final score of 114 Ooh. to 97. Number 2. Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Miami Heat. On this night, Jordan put up a stat line that didn't look all that bad, at least until you looked at his efficiency. With an opportunity to sweep the Heat in Miami, Jordan absolutely folded as he put up 29 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 turns. Damn, shot 9 of 30. Disgusting, uh, 9 of 35 shooting from the field, and a terrible 0 of 8 from 3 point range. Uh, and due to this, the Heat won the game, 87 to 80. Since the NBA merger in 1976, of playoff games where a player attempted at least 35 shots, this was the most inefficient shooting display in NBA history. Wow. To say that Jordan was bad in this game would be an understatement. 
This was literally the most inaccurate brick fest that we've ever seen in the Not a brick bowls. fest, come on, I'll do Jordan. Fortunately, the Bulls were able to eliminate the Heat in the next game, despite another night of inefficient shooting from MJ. If the Bulls hadn't won the series, this performance would have been haunting MJ's legacy to this very day. Number 1. Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals against the Orlando Mr. Magic. The greatest choke of Michael Jordan's career came on a season where the Bulls failed to win the championship. Whether or not you agree with the narrative that Jordan was still rusty from his baseball playing career, you can't argue with the fact that he was simply not up to his standards on this night. The Magic was a good team, man. Only 19 points on eight of Just uh, eight turnovers? Sheesh. The thing about it, the Magic had a great team back then. They had Shaq, of course, Penny Hardaway. Dennis Scott, Nick Anderson, Horace Grant, uh, I think they had Brian Shaw, uh, Daryl Armstrong, I think, but they had a, they had a dope squad. Of 22 shooting from the field. He also had a disastrous total of eight turnovers, with the last two turnovers coming in the final 20 seconds of the fourth quarter, Damn. each of them in a one possession game. These two blunders and the game's most crucial moments were the most unclutched things we had ever seen from him. Jordan said after the game that he felt personally responsible for his team losing. And even Orlando's Nick Anderson said number 45 is not number 23. I couldn't have done that to number 23. So what do you guys think? Were these Michael Jordan moments something that should impact his legacy? Or are these just insignificant games that don't matter in the grand scheme of things? No, it, know no, it, in the comment section below. No, it, it doesn't matter, man, because, you know, after it's all said and done, at the end of the day, Jordan's still the GOAT, man. You know, even though he's not my favorite player of all time, which Al Iverson is, you know, Jordan is still the GOAT. Well, my lighting look kind of bad, man. But Jordan is still the GOAT, man.